After a busy summer at River Co I've taken to the road for break and a chance to find inspiration from Britain's northern larder. I've been living the outdoor life for a couple of weeks now and I've already had some memorable culinary adventures. In Scotland, I tackled the national dish of haggis head on. And in Cumbria, I went foraging in and around the Great Lakes to create a feast for the revelers of the Coniston Water Festival. Cheers! <laughs> in a few days' time, I've got to be back down south for the unmissable annual treat that's Dorset Apple Day. But I've still got a little bit of time left to plunder the Yorkshire larder for a few more goodies and maybe a recipe or two to take home with me. I'm delighted to be arriving in Yorkshire, where, as in Dorset, the people pride themselves on a tradition of good farming and good eating. But I suspect that Yorkshire's treats will, if anything, be even heartier. Today is the first day since I've been on the road that it's really started to feel quite autumnal. The mist is coming in, the leaves are turning, there's a bit of a chill in the air, which I reckon makes it the perfect day for a bit of an investigation into the delights of Yorkshire baking. It's been a long time since breakfast, and I'm starting to fantasize about beautiful buns, comforting cakes, tantalizing tarts. Helmsley is a medieval market town, and as I've spotted at least three bakeries already, it seems like a good place to find some inspiring elevenses. The evidence of hearty appetites and fine baking activity is staring at me from every shop window. But I'm hoping to find something unusual that I can't get back home in Dorset. Morning. Morning. How are you? All right, thank you. Very well. Uh, I'm looking for a, a rather greedy treat for my elevenses. But what have you got that's particularly local or special to you? Um, I would say the Yorkshire curd tart. Yorkshire curd tart? Yes. You've sold it to me in three words. That sounds delicious. I, I think a, th a third of one of those would do me very well. Thank you very much. OK. Mm. So good. Sort of creamy and crumbly at the same time. And somehow, one slice isn't quite enough. Almost everyone here seems to be eating curd tart, and having seconds is a good excuse to join some fellow curd snafflers and find out a bit more about this much-loved pastry. So it's a sultana scone for you. Yes. And a slice of curd tart it is. for you. I see you've cut that in two. Are you sharing the curd tart? No, I'm eating it all by myself. It's all for you. <laughs> ah, another pair of curd tarts. Yes. Do you mind if I join you? Not in the least. Cheers. The natives are hungry, but also friendly. And by chatting them up, I've managed to get a good tip off. And her curd tarts. The word is that the finest curd tarts of all are made not in the town bakeries, but out in the country, in the farmhouse kitchens, from a very special kind of milk. So I'm on the trail of a real old Yorkshire dairy farm where the curd tart is still made the good old-fashioned way. I've been directed to Yatsbrow Farm, and I'm hoping that farmer's wife Anne Barnes will reveal her family's ancient curdy okay. secrets. Timing's good today. We've got twin heifer calves this morning, mother cow... Born this morning? Born this morning, and plenty of bislin milk for our curd tarts. So you haven't even milked her once yet? No, she'll be coming into the parlour shortly for the bislin milk to make the curd. Bisling milk? Bislin milk. And why is it so special? Because it's got, it's full of colostrum. So it's extra and it's rich. rich. It's extra rich and thick and creamy. And this precious first milk is the secret of Yorkshire's finest curd tarts. There it comes. Nice, thick, rich, bristling milk. 
Aren't you a clever girl? The Bissling milk is so rich it looks like custard. But you have to be quick because the cow only produces it for the first three days after calving. Ready to get cooking? That's ready now. Let's go. Oh, you've got a good pan full there, Ant. And this is basically the curdling process. This is how you're this, going to get this the This is curds. how it'll curdle. As it comes to the boil, it curdles. Then you, this is how you get your curd. And tell me how you got started making curd tarts. My mum showed me as a young girl about 50 years ago, I think. So you've been making curd tart the same way for 50 years? For 50 years, yes, I would think so, well, yeah. Be a privilege so, to taste it. Oh, something's happening there. Yeah, it's turning nicely now. That's it, it's gone. I'll pop it into the sieve. I'll hold that for you. Goodness me. There you are. Wow. Just like that. Do you mind if I have a tiny taste? I'm very no. curious. No, you can... It'll be rather hot now. Mmm. Mmm. It's kind of come together like cheese. But it doesn't taste cheesy. It's fresher than that. Right. If you want to make me a little bit of pastry for the um, pie bottom, um, there's your bit of lard and a little Ooh, bit lovely. of salt. If you can rub it in like breadcrumbs for me. Certainly. While I crack on with a good old lardy crust for the tart, Anne shows me how to make the curd filling. To the sieved curd, she adds three tablespoons of sugar, a couple of eggs and a pinch of nutmeg. And to make it even richer, a lovely dollop of double cream. And finally, she flings in a few currants. Some people put sultanas in and room. Different farmers' wives have different ways in producing their curd tarts. As it's cooled a little, it's quite a stiffish texture. It's almost like cream cheese. It's carry... looking lovely, isn't it? It is. I'll carry and mix it till it goes nice and smooth. And that's it. Oh, no, you put a bit of flour in at the end, do you? No, no, no that's ah. it now. That's it. Anne's deft hands quickly turn my lump of lardy pastry into a perfect tart shell. And there's the case complete. Do you know, it was an absolute joy to watch you do that. And that's your curd ready to go into your pie to bake now. Right. So that's two pies. So we'll now pop them in the oven and see how we go on. Then about 20 minutes and they should be ready. Lovely. Nothing goes to waste. Anne's lucky dog gets to lap up the way. One unbelievable spread, Anne. This is a regular Yorkshire tea, is it? It is, yes. This is how we eat in Yorkshire. Superb. Luckily, after watching Anne make those lovely tarts, I'm ravenous, which is the only sensible state to be in, faced with a spread like this. Even though I say it myself, it's quite delicious, is this curd. It's superb. I've discovered a lovely new recipe to take back home with me, provided my Land Rover can take the extra weight. So I guess it's just as well that I've got a night to sleep it off. The next morning, I'm surprisingly hungry again. So Yorkshire's parting breakfast gift of a whole ring of parasol mushrooms is extremely welcome. You just can't beat a campfire breakfast, and this one should set me up nicely for my next culinary detour, a foray into a rather more urban environment. Great time ransacking some of the edible secrets of the north, but now my road trip takes me to the heart of the Midlands. I'm going on a mission to find a very special recipe that will allow me to do full justice to some very important livestock waiting for me back in Dorset. At the beginning of the summer, I visited my neighbour, Anthea, who's been rearing goats for the last 20 years for both milk and meat. It was the meat animals that interested me. So, Anthea, are they easy to look after? Relatively, yes. They're not the same as sheep or cattle. They're a different animal um, to care for. How would you describe the character of, of goat meat rather, as, as opposed to lamb, which everyone's very familiar with? I would say it's got a bit more flavour than lamb. It's maybe between lamb and beef. Really? And maybe a little bit of venison as well. Uh-huh. And usually quite a lean meat, or does it yes. have a little bit of... Yes. No, it's, it's usually a very lean meat. Lower cholesterol, lower fat. They look incredibly healthy, you animals. They've got a lovely sheen about them. Oh, that's the sunshine on their backs. They enjoy All that. animals benefit from that, yes. 
I bought four of Anthea's sun-blessed goats and made a good home for them on a rough patch of ground back at River Cottage HQ. The plan was to fatten them up over the summer for slaughter in the autumn. Now their time has nearly come and I want to do them full justice. That's what's brought me to Birmingham. I'm hoping to track down an authentic goat recipe from a culture that really understands and appreciates this meat. Nowhere is goat more highly prized than in the Caribbean community. And so I'm heading for the Hansworth suburb of the city. Here, the Caribbean influence is felt not just on the streets, but also in the famous Uplands allotments. As I can never resist other people's vegetable gardens, it seems like the perfect place to start my investigation. This stuff seems to be growing everywhere, and I've no idea what it is. Hi there. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine. Good. Can I ask you about this plant? Because I've seen it growing everywhere, yes. but I've no idea what it is. Well, we call it Kalaloo. 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 It's, it's green, iron in it. Iron in All it? All iron. Like spinach? Yes, yes. So do you cook the leaves? Put them into a pot and you steam them. Steam them to, the, just eat them. to let them wilt down a little bit? Yeah, you don't throw water on them. Really? Just steam them? Yeah, you just put a bit of butter, a bit of oil on them and steam them. What have you got in here? Huh? What have you got in here? Well, let's have the seeds them that we cut off. Ah, so you're collecting these for, to sow next year's crop? Yes, yes. See them here? Yeah? Ah. That's a seed them that. They're beautiful little pink things. Yeah, that's a seed them that. Them there. Would you mind if I took one of these away with I don't me? mind. Yeah, no. Thank you very much. Thank you for revealing the yes. secrets of Callaloo. <laughs> yes. I'm looking forward to trying to grow some Callaloo back in Dorset, but now it's back onto the streets of Handsworth to immerse myself even deeper in the essential flavours of the Caribbean. There's all sorts of unusual goodies that I definitely can't get back home, including Callaloo in tins. And since I know I'll never be able to grow coconuts in Dorset, I may as well grab a couple here. Mm -hmm. I need to check it. What do you call these ones? They're called scotch bonnets. Scotch bonnets? Yes. Very hot. And leave the seeds. Don't, don't and the seeds the... are really vicious, are they? Yeah. You could chop wood with this, practically, couldn't you? Yeah, they soak that for about two days before they cook it. Do you know what kind of fish this was originally? I think it was cod, you know. Cod? Yeah. But I mustn't be too distracted from my main meaty mission. So where can I find the best goat curry around here? Bing, he runs the island hut close by the Six Ways Islands. Well, that's a recommendation. Very much Thanks so. very much. All right, brother, you, you stay here. Thanks a lot. This way. That's one good tip, but if I'm going to find the ultimate recipe, I'd better see if the word on the street agrees. Can I ask you where I'd find the best goat curry in town? Island hut. Island hut? Yes, Bing. Bing is the man. Yes, and he says the best goat curry anywhere in Birmingham. Where do I have to go for the best curried goat round here? Island Hut. Island Hut, there you go again. It reminds you of back home. It reminds you of home. That's right. It's the real thing. It's the real thing. Where is it? It's down the Zells. Not too far. Not too far. Thanks a lot. OK, bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> The trail is hotting up, and I'm getting so hungry I could eat a goat. Well, hi there. How are you? Very well. Yeah, that's all right. I'd, I'd like to try your goat curry. Curry goat. Curry goat. Curry goat. Curry goat. God, I've got to get it right. <laughs> so this is it. Yes, sir. The curry goat. Yes, sir. I've been told I'm not allowed to say goat curry ever again. Never again. Wow. Wow. It looks beautiful. Yeah. So this is real goat meat, not yes. lamb, not no, mutton. Real goat, goat meat. Yeah. Excellent. Wow. Mm. I asked a lot of people where the best goat curry in town was. This? Curry goat. Curry goat. Curry goat. <laughs> curry goat. Curry goat. Curry goat. <laughs> curry goat. Yeah. I asked them what the best curry goat in town was, yeah. and practically everybody said Island Hut. Yeah. Bing. So you're okay. the man. Yes. And I have to say, this is absolutely fantastic. OK. Now, Bing, I have to tell you, I have a special reason for coming here, which is that I've got some goats at home in Dorset, and I want to make them into a goat curry. So I'm not... Curry goats. Curry goats. Curry goats. 
So I want to know the secret of your curry goat. Hooray! <laughs> wow, into the inner sanctum. So you've got the meat. Yes. And I've got the ingredients for the marinade. Of course, of course. How important is the marinade? That's the most important one. So the marinade does most yes, of the job of tenderizing yes, the meat. It, it sits for a little, it sits for a while, you know. And what do you think is the main secret of your curry goat? Why do people keep coming back for more? It's me, you. It's me. It's you. You it's are the secret. Me. I am the secret, you. I am the secret. If you're the secret, then my curry goat's not going to be as good as yours, <laughs> is it? What else is going in the marinade? You've got a scotch bonnet there. Ah, that's the really fierce pepper, oh, isn't I'm it? I'm telling you, man. Why do you always wash the meat? It's like a tradition. You must wash the meat. I think that's... It's just the way it's always been done. Yeah, it's always been done that way, you know. You've got to wash it. You've and a little to. bit of lemon juice, you always to add of that? Of course, of course. The marinade is made up of garlic, ginger, spring onions, scotch bonnet chilies, onions, peppers, tomatoes, all finished off with a few sprigs of thyme. It's piled onto the washed goat meat and thoroughly tossed together. Wow. The marinading meat gets a final spice up with a special Caribbean curry powder blend and some aromatic allspice berries crushed to order. Okay, That's all right. Wow. The smell is coming off this are fantastic. The meat will be left to marinade overnight, which means we're going to make Bing's next curry with the meat he marinated yesterday. A little oil goes in the pan, and one of Bing's special touches is about to be revealed. So, in fact, you add the spices a second time in the marinade and then again in the oil. I'm going to burn it. Ah, this is, uh, this is, this is one of your secrets, isn't it? See? I'm burning the curry now, you. And you actually want that curry powder to fry quite yeah, hard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just turning a yeah, darker brown. Yeah, yeah, it's going to go brown now. Uh, OK. OK, we're ready now, you. Just take it down with your hands that it don't splash up on you. <laughs> so no more liquid in at this point? No, no, no. It's going to make its own liquid. Really? Yeah. You're not, you don't put any stock or any liquid no. in at any point now? No. Really? How amazing. Lid on? Lid on. Leave her there to simmer. Well, you've revealed some of your secrets. Maybe not the magic fingers. Yeah. But I certainly know a little bit more about goat curry than when I came in. OK. Sorry, curry goat. Curry goat. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on the road for almost two weeks, and I'm finally heading for home. I certainly feel like I've recharged my batteries. And, perhaps more importantly, with inspiration from new landscapes and fresh faces, I've revived my excitement about creating a vibrant menu for the coming autumn season. Well, it was a great trip, pretty relaxing on the whole, extremely useful in the research and development department. I feel like I discovered some excellent local ingredients and some wonderful recipes, which I'm ready to make part of the River Cottage repertoire. But it's good to be back in Dorset and back in business. Mm.